Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another math tutorial. Today we're going to start on complex numbers, which is a pretty difficult topic, especially in high school maths. So uh, I would only suggest that you proceed with these lessons if you are quite confident with all the high school maths that you have done so far, especially with algebra. Uh, set theory and things like that. So, so far in set theory, uh, if you have been following my lessons, you would know that we have just completed seven lessons on set theory where we talked about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational, irrational, and real numbers. So, if you have no idea what these symbols mean, then perhaps you are not ready for this lesson just yet. Make sure you go back to those lessons on uh, number sets. Okay, so you probably realize the number sets that we have here are arranged from smallest to largest. So, natural number is the smallest number set going from 1 to infinity. Uh, whole numbers only all the way to real numbers which is pretty much any number you can think of uh, in the real number plane so we are now going to go on to complex numbers which is outside this real number uh, set now you probably think how is that possible okay if I have a real number for example 4.32 or I could have square root of 7 just any or 3 divided by 4 so far the real number set covers all the numbers that you know so far so how can there be a number set that is outside the real number set okay now the, the number set that we're going to talk about is complex numbers the set of complex numbers and before I get into complex numbers uh, I need to talk about a, a concept called the imaginary number imaginary number which is equal to I I is the symbol for an imaginary number so instead of x we use i and what is the definition of an imaginary number the definition of an imaginary number is i squared is equal to negative one i squared is equal to negative one that's i is therefore equal to uh, square root of negative one and obviously whenever you square root something the answer could be positive or negative All right so i squared is equal to negative one i is equal to plus minus square root of negative one and if you type this into the calculator you will see that the calculator shows up as undefined undefined on the calculator and the reason is because the calculator cannot work with complex numbers alright so what you guys will have to learn is to uh, process complex numbers by hand and it's not very difficult because we're gonna teach you guys how to do that okay so you might ask well how is this complex number used why do we need to know this well let's start off with some basic examples and then we'll gradually uh, go on to more uh, applications and complex numbers of tri of complex numbers and trigonometry and so on so let's start off with a simple solving an equation so I'm going to solve the equation solve the equation uh, x squared plus uh, t 
10 is equal to 0. x squared plus 10 is equal to 0. Okay, now, if I try to solve this equation uh, by moving the number to the other side, so I have x squared is equal to negative 10. Alright, and then I try to square root both sides, so I have x is equal to the square root of negative 10 plus minus the square root of negative 10. And then I can't go any further because if you type this in the calculator, uh, if you type this in the calculator, it's not going to come up with an answer. So what I'm going to do instead is inside the square root sign, as you know, I have negative 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that section so I have square root plus minus square root bracket instead of just writing negative 10 I'm gonna write 10 times negative 1 10 times negative 1 because 10 times negative 1 is negative 10 so you are allowed to make this simplification and now what I'm going to do is, as you can see previously, I have i squared is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to substitute this variable i squared into negative 1 inside this equation. So now I'm going to write plus minus square root of 10 i squared 10 i squared why am I allowed to do that because negative 1 is i squared so I have 10 i squared inside the square root sign okay now if you remember the rules for uh, square rooting numbers Uh, basically, if you remember this, if we have the square root of a times b, right, that's the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. Okay, uh, you might have to do a few lessons on thirds if you haven't seen this before. So now I have the square root of 10. plus or minus square root of 10 times the square root of i squared is just i times i and as you guys know uh, in algebra we don't write the times so it's just the square root of 10 i make sure the i is outside of the square root sign so don't extend this line beyond where it's supposed to be make sure you just have the line there and with certs we can leave out the plus or minus because we know that the answer is, could be either positive or negative when you square root a number so that's just assumed knowledge so that's the answer of that uh, we will do another example quickly right now so try to do this example really quickly and then come back when you're done oops I forgot the little squared symbol <laughs> otherwise it'll be a bit too easy so have a go at that come back when you're done okay so let's quickly do this together so we have x squared equals negative 49 after we move the 49 to the other side uh, we're gonna now square root both sides so I have x equals the square root of negative 49 can't do anything with that so I'm separating the negative from the 49 so it's 49 times
times negative 1 inside the square root sign the negative 1 becomes i squared so I have 49 i squared inside the square root sign which becomes 7 i and now we actually have to include the plus or minus at the front because we got rid of the square root sign so the answer is actually 7i or minus 7i okay I hope you guys have learned something from this tutorial see you guys next time